it's official, I can't be bothered. Recognise this? Yeah, well, today then it's time to look at how we can build healthy routines and practices create a habit tracker in Notion. I wanna show you some systems that I've built that can help and talk about how to overcome the resistance. Right, toast, peanut butter, absolutely amazing. Hello, uh, hi, welcome to Better Creating. My name's Simon. If you've not been to the channel before, it's all about simplifying creative life. So I make videos about simple living, productivity, and creating better content. So today, I've got myself off that sofa, which has not been easy recently, if I'm honest. I've been finding myself more and more unmotivated, tired and frustrated. We're on lockdowns, there's a global pandemic going on. It makes things very difficult. So this week I've been thinking about tools that might help us get past that, how we can effectively set habits and stick to them. So there are three stages to this video. First of all, we're gonna talk about the problem, the resistance, as Stephen Pressfield calls it, um, and how we can confront that in order to get unstuck. Secondly, about the link between goals and practices, or goals and habits, and how we can build systems that effectively create habits that take us in the right direction we wanna go. And to that end, what I've been doing is building habit trackers, or rather, practice trackers, practices, um, in my Notion system. So I wanna give you a quick overview of a couple of them that I've made, so that you can see them. And later in the video, let me know in the comments which of these two habit trackers you prefer. And in the next video, uh, on this subject, I'm gonna be showing you how you can build your own. So if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button so you get more of that content and you don't miss that by pressing that bell notification. Let's do it. Feeling stuck, unmotivated, down about what it is you've gotta get done is a natural part of life. We have to accept that it's gonna be there. It's what Stephen Pressfield calls the resistance. Uh, in his book on uh, the war of art. Now that's a play on the art of war and it gives you a clue into kind of what that book's about. He talks about, for example, writing and he says, it's not the writing part that's hard. What is hard is sitting down to write. What keeps us from sitting down is the resistance. The resistance is real. Actually sitting down and being able to start something can be really, really tricky. Resistance is not a peripheral opponent. Resistance arises from within. It is self-generated and self-perpetuated. Resistance is the enemy within. So in order to overcome this resistance, there are a couple of things we can do. We can remove the friction uh, in our day-to-day -day life uh, and the barriers that get in the way of acting in the way we wanna act. But also we need to build in some more core principles. We need to build in goals that inspire us, uh, drive us, and are the fuel. So in a moment, I'll show you how I've integrated a link between those top level goals through to the practices in my Notion um, system. That will show you a little bit more about what I'm talking about. But let's talk about the other side of it, the friction in day-to-day -day life that gets in the way of things. Make the first three things in the day accessible with as few barriers to doing them as possible. I've realized recently, for example, that I can easily just get drawn into checking the stock market or my YouTube analytics or emails in the morning, and so I fail to start exercising immediately in the morning. That in turn leaves me far less motivated and awake, plus I feel like I'm already two hours behind starting something meaningful before I've taken my first intentional action. So I'm hiding my phone away at the moment, piling work out clothes and house keys next to my bed and reminding myself of the post-workout feeling always being better than the option of another lethargic lay-in. Associate with people who are likely to improve you, Seneca. If you can be around people who also want similar things, you might be able to work with those people to be an accountability buddy, if you've ever heard of this. So I uh, did this for writing a funding application recently with a friend where we actually agreed that we would get on Zoom and just work, but be on Zoom together. And by having that kind of date with a, a colleague um, in another house, we could sit down and both write and actually get something done. So that idea of having an accountability buddy, someone who'll hold you to your actions can be unbelievably valuable because of course the resistance comes from within. Leo Babauta of Zen Habits was on the Tim Ferriss show recently talking about how many of us feel anxiety but won't notice that it is anxiety. We just automatically go to a way of reacting to it. 
It might be Netflix, YouTube, procrastination, or doing a lot of things reactively. But if you can recognise these symptoms in yourself, you can start to put steps in to counter them and do what John Whelan says, which is ask the simple question, what is life asking me to do? As Leo says, this removes us from a place of self-concern and the one important thing we need to do becomes clear. This way we become aware of the principle of priority, that we must know the difference between what's urgent and what's important and always do what's most important first. For example, if you're the kind of person who places your health first, everything else, I think, seems to follow. So that's what I'm working on at the moment. So this is my recipe for building effective habits. And here is my home screen, my dashboard in Notion. And this is entirely built around a principle of how to build effective habits. My whole system is focused on effectively connecting my big, high-level life goals and desires right down into knowledge collection and the skills and actions that I need to take in order to achieve them. It essentially is a Venn diagram for habits. Let me explain what I mean. Uh, this is my dad's and it's a very famous book called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Um, and in it, Stephen Covey talks about a kind of Venn diagram. So an effective habit essentially needs to balance knowledge, the right skills and the desire to achieve it. So to balance knowledge of what to do and perhaps more importantly, why to do it alongside developing the right skills that let us learn how to do it. And finally, we need the desire to give us the drive to want to do it. This process of getting stuff done needs to follow uh, these areas. I need to visualize what I need to do and then I need to take action. And I'll also, I'm also gonna need some fuel. I'm gonna need the things that inspire me and gather knowledge and skills. And that is in what I'm calling collect. So for 2021, there's a lot of new stuff going on. I wanted to build something that's more integrated into uh, my goals, my guiding principles and building practices. Now I call them practices because habits are what practices become. Habits are the things that become part of our identity, whereas practices are the things I want to do and practice so that it becomes a natural part of being a highly effective person, or whatever it is, right? Now this follows very much like Tiago Forte's other ideas around power, um, David Allen's approach to getting things done, all uh, people you should check out. You have to make it your own. So my view of this is probably a bastardized version of all of those. So this is where I set goals, essentially. If you've not seen my previous video on um, how to plan your year, uh, this builds on that. Um, I have start a new year review that will basically generate this for the next year. I can go through my wins and my losses. Um, I can then set goals using this. And then eventually all of that uh, lines up into this section, which is actioning it into the system. So you can see in here that I have uh, the three goals, the three main goals that have been kind of brought across from this. Now at the end of the year I could click complete and it would disappear and I'd be able to start with a new goal using a new goal template. In here uh, I have a way of essentially I want to put in what are the essential practical achievable actions that will get me towards these goals and how regularly I'll be able to be doing them. So if they're practices, if they're going to be regular occurrences that I want to build or it might be that I set wider projects with individual tasks that sit within them. We're just going to look at this practices section. So here's a tour of habit tracker number one. Let's put one in as an example, like sneaking some, um, some reps. So let's do that. I'm going to click on this and I'm just going to go. Um, and what I now want to do is fill this out. So I'm going to call it, it's a new practice. I can give it a weight person in there and I'm gonna change the cover. Um, and then I just want to put the frequency. So I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna go, I wanna be at a daily action. I want that to start today, let's say. And I want the end date to be December 31st. That will then automatically work out how many days are left until then. So that's 325. Um, so that is my target, zero out of 325. It says, let's begin. And next due is empty because I haven't logged anything yet. So let's just check it. It's worked because you can go down here as a little view of it. Um, it says my state, it gives my status. This is how I kind of input. If we then go back to the dashboard on a kind of daily basis, I get this view. 
um, alongside my tasks. And if it says, let's begin or take action, I know those have to happen today. Um, and it will also say when I last did it. So I last did this on the 9th, um, it's next due on the 10th and I'm on track. I last did this on the 14th, um, so it's next due by the 11th. Now the way this works is really simple. I just click on it and I log that I did it. There you go. Now if you forgot to log it for whatever reason, you can just put in our temporary uh, log. Say actually I did this yesterday uh, and it just means that it will then tell you when it's next due correctly. Otherwise, I just clear that because I did it today and it means it's next due tomorrow and it tells me I'm on track. Now that's what's really cool about this is you'd all, you, the only edit you've got to do is click on the thing and put a new number in. And so you're kind of counting it up, you're tracking your progress. You've also then got kind of views just by daily practices and you've got views monthly and so on and so forth um, and this table. I prefer that one because I can see it all there. I put it in a toggle list because it just means that I can then keep everything clear. So that's one approach. However, it's quite complex, obviously. If I um, quickly just show you how complex it is, look at this. There's a lot of programming in there. All the stuff that returns, start date, end date, next due. So I've got the number of days, weeks, and months passed, which will then give me a reference for the progress, but also how many, how far I've got, and if I'm behind or on track. So that allows me to do things like on track, let's begin, take action. This here is a CONCAT formula that will give me back both the log and the target together, but written as text. I could show those, but I figured it's much nicer just to say you've done two out of this many. If you wanna be simpler, here's habit tracker number two. I love the simplicity of this. It doesn't log everything for a year in units like the other one did, but in some ways, this might be much more preferable. It's purely for daily practices, daily habits. Uh, so there's um, a template. I click on the template, um, so let's say the week is the starting the 8th of Feb, I just type that in, drop it down, and you'll see today, basically. Well, you'd, presumably you'd start this on a Monday, and so it would show me Monday. Um, I've got a progress view, which just shows me here um, how many out, you know, where I'm at on each one. If I want to add new ones, I would just add these uh, actually in within the template uh, within here because... Uh, this would then mean that it generates it again. This view is beautiful, particularly for mobile, because it allows you to um, just see them as cards on your mobile phone, which I think is really helpful, and it deletes them. So I'll show you. I can either say, okay, I journaled on Monday, I skipped that on Monday, I did it then, I did that, yeah? And, and then it, it clears. You then go to the next view, Tuesday, and it will give me my progress. So how many I've done, perfect, perfect, good, because I skipped that one. And you just do this each day. And then finally, what we would do is just bring up final report and you'll see where we were. Wow, I did skip five of those, not so good. Um, and this was fine, because I did uh, five. The way this works is you just take the week, shut it, move it up to the habit tracker archive and drop it in. And then if I click into there, this gives me a view. So there's last week and there's this week. And throughout the process, what it will then do is just give you um, a kind of a continuous view of the year just by dropping it in. So it's a really simple way to do it. Uh, the reason I like this is you don't have to clear it each time. You can generate it through the template, drop it in, and every time you're gonna have um, a collection. Now, of course, it isn't gonna pull all of those totals together. There probably is a, is a way to do it um, by linking them all together, but I don't think it's worth it with this version. I think if you want that more kind of uh, yearly kind of flexible tracking system, something like the previous version is the one for you. That is my habit tracker, um, simplified for just daily tasks. There's one perhaps final approach, which I think could really work for some people, which would be the date and it would set the weekday or whatever it is, and then you just go through the day. So habit one, habit two, and then there's a simple formula on the end here that um, then calculates your progress on each of those. And so this version, you could then just go all the way down. But what I love about um, these two versions is, is the way they present as cards. I think there's a little bit more motivational. I think the information that comes back is better. Let me know in the comments below which of these two habit trackers you prefer, and look out for the video tutorial where I'll be building them. 
You know what the best thing you could do for me right now is if you found this video valuable, boop that like button. It makes such a difference to help me get this content out to other people and reach one of my goals, which is to make this channel be something in my life that sustains me. Subscribe if you're not already, hit the bell notification button so you see my videos turn up. Now get outside, enjoy the fresh air, um, and whatever happens, make sure you prioritize what matters most. Nice, see ya. Thank you.